Generally speaking, when the government flirts with the construction sector, investors love it because it means more contracts could be on the way. Last week, we briefly touched on Gamuda, where it could be one of the biggest beneficiaries of the MRT3 project. Just a few days after that, the government helped Gamuda make headlines again. This time, it's about the toll concession air that Gamuda owns. Hi, I'm Frankie. Welcome back to my Fox show. Today, I want to talk about four very important toll highways in the Klang Valley, their owners, and what the government is doing that shocks the market. Personally, I have a love-hate relationship with the toll highways in Malaysia. As a citizen, man, every day I step out of the house, there's toll here, toll there, toll everywhere. Sometimes the amount that I have to pay for tolls could buy me a full set meal at the end of the day. But from an investor standpoint, a new toll means more contracts for construction companies. More contracts means a high possibility of share prices going up. High share prices equals gains. So much so that paying tolls makes me happy. Have you ever wondered what trick the government is playing? How construction companies benefit from it? And most importantly, how can you make a profit from it? Malaysia is a developing country. In the process of its development, more and more people are migrating to urban cities to look for better jobs and better living standards. Transportation is the veins of the country's economy. So, when the urban population increases, roads need to be upgraded as well. The problem is, building roads is not cheap. And with the budget deficit that the Malaysian government has been facing since 1997 Asian financial crisis, it needs to find a new way to ensure road transport infrastructure is keeping up with the growth of the country. Everyone asks why I left my banking job. To be honest, it's because I don't want to dress like a clown just to look professional. Malaysia's so hot. I cannot tahan lah. That's why I decided to become an entrepreneur so that I can wear this every day. Just look at it. It's ultra breathable material doesn't trap heat by allowing airflow. It's so airy. On top of that, because of the dynamic flex technology in its stretchable waist, I'm allowed more mobility when I wear their pants. Now I can squat down without worrying about tearing anything. Then on the days when I have to meet clients and look smart, I have the option wearing their long pants too but I usually wear shorts in the office. I also don't have to worry about soggy pants because their moisture wicking material helps remove and dry sweat from my skin rapidly. But the best thing about bottom slab pants is that it is abrasion resistance, which means it is able to withstand wear and tear. You don't have to keep buying new pants. Save money way. If you guys want to get your hands, or should I say legs in these pants, check out the link in the description for a 10% discount. Bottom slab, you rock. To do this, they got a little bit more creative in doing things. Instead of funding the road projects directly, the government encourages private sector to take on such projects. This means that the private companies have to fork out the initial funding to build the highways for the government with no guarantee that there's going to be a lot of traffic using the roads that they built. Billions of ringgit leh! Very high risk way. Moreover, even if the government allows the construction companies to collect tolls on the road that they built, those roads are often built to connect new townships and commercial areas which may not not have the desirable traffic at the start. Who's willing to take such a risk? Don't worry, we have our neighborhood friendly government to help. In order to migrate the huge financial risk that construction companies could be undertaking, the government came up with a clause to protect toll operators. Under this golden rule, toll operators are allowed to increase their toll charges during the concession period, which is a weird clause to add in in the first place. You see, the capex to build a highway is one off and logically speaking traffic growth will increase in the long run as the highway matures and population increases what's the rationale of writing down in ink to say that toll operators can increase toll rates throughout the tenure of the concession period even better still is that in this ruling if the government stops them from increasing toll rates it needs to compensate toll operators the opportunity cost or the potential amount that toll operators could have collected if toll rates were adjusted higher. The most recent example would be the delay of toll rate increase for Kersas 
SKVE and East Coast Expressway last year in an effort to alleviate the Brakyat's burden caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. To date, there's a total of 21 existing toll rate hikes postponement in the country and the estimated cost to compensate all of them would cost the government roughly 2.25 billion ringgit. I wonder which brilliant policymaker drafted this kind of compensation clause for the toll operators. And thanks to this fella, the financial burden is choking the government's coffers today. Back in 2019, the PH government tried to end this nightmare once and for all by making four intra Klang Valley highways owned by Gamuda toll free. And guess what was the compensation the government have to pay Gamuda? 18 billion ringgit. 18 billion, my friend! The stock market got excited for a while when it heard that the PH government was exploring the option to make Malaysian toll roads free because that would mean that investors don't have to wait 20 to 30 years to slowly collect their capitals back from toll operations. They thought the government would buy them off one shot, one handsome lump sum like a lottery. To be honest, that initiative was a tough effort to right the wrong of the someone who drafted that kind of golden rule for toll operators. At the end of the PH regime, they couldn't fulfill their manifesto to abolish tolls in Malaysia due to lack of funding. Now, with GE15 becoming closer day by day, it is the season to impress the rugged again. This time round, the government modified and enhanced the original PH proposal to set up an entity known as Amanat Leboraya Rakyat and take over the four highways under Gamoda and its associate company, Litrack. Under this deal, Gamoda and Litrack received offers from ALR to buy up the entire equity interest in the highway concession air for 5.4 billion ringgit, including inheriting a debt amount of 2.06 billion, meaning to say the actual cash upfront is only 3.3 billion ringgit. In order to get that amount of huge funding, ALR plans to raise funds through Islamic bonds and slowly redeem the bonds using toll collection generated from the highway concession S. Once the bond is fully redeemed, ALR would be debt free and the entity would be transferred back to the government. Everyone is a winner in this exercise. First of all, Gamuda and Litrack get to monetize their assets and redeploy those funds into the upcoming MRT3 Circle Line project so they don't have to borrow money from the banks to kickstart construction work. There's a high possibility that the profit margin for the MRT3 project could be much better than if Gamuda didn't sell the toll roads away. Secondly, the government doesn't need to fork out a single cent to fund the acquisition of the highways since the responsibility to raise funds falls on Amanat Lebo Raya Rakyat. In other words, this exercise is completely off balance sheet for the government, which lessens the financial burden for them. Thirdly, investors who subscribe to ALR's Islamic bond get to earn a decent yield from the toll concession as until the principal amount is fully redeemed. The only risk here is if nobody uses toll roads anymore, which is Unlikely, chances are traffic growth will be quite consistent following a steady historical growth rate of 2% over the past 15 years. And finally, no more toll rate hikes under this program. We as consumers just need to be a little bit more patient and wait for the toll income generated to pay off the bonds and we will be finally free from tolls on those four highways. After ALR announced its proposal that would see Gamuda and Litrack monetize their investment investments in four highways in the city, the spotlight now is on the other concession S. In terms of publicly listed companies, IJM owns Lekas, Best Raya, MPE Highway and the West Coast Expressway. EcoWest is currently operating Duke 1, 2 and 3. On the private side, PNB has the Akle, Kajang Silk Highway, Gatri Corridors and Lebo Raya Kemuning Shah Alam currently in operation. Perhaps the first four highway acquisition is a pilot test on the structure to see if it works for all stakeholders involved. If the deal goes through, it would set a benchmark in the industry for future toll abolishment exercises. My personal opinion, if this is such a powerful political card to play, why use it all in one upcoming GE15? 
16, wait la until GE 16, 17, 18 and so on and so forth to declare efforts to demolish toes to win votes. Like that only got songs to sing ma. Maybe it's not so wise to try to outsmart the market to speculate on other toe concession as holders such as IJM or EcoWest only to find out that the government never even thought of them in this chapter of the story. That's all we have for today. Hashtag fucks.